Hello, uh, and uh, my name is Kellen Best. So uh, I'm uh, a mixed Cree, uh, uh, or sorry, I'm a mixed race Afro Cree woman from Treaty 4, the traditional territory of the Cree, Soto, Assiniboine, and Metis peoples. And the land on which uh, I am currently uh, is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and uh, Anishinaabe peoples. And this territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is, and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Uh, as you'll notice, I didn't say Brock University's full <laughs> land acknowledgement. Uh, as a personal preference, um, I, I don't. Um, and I think it's because when it comes to land acknowledgements, we have to be very careful because people can very much get into the habit of repeating them without meaning or using land acknowledgements that they didn't create themselves. So instead, I thought I would take this time to uh, talk about what land acknowledgements kind of are, why do we do them, and uh, parts of, and some just more and more in depth look at what they are, so that you can sort of understand your relationship with land acknowledgements. So they're, they're about quite a few things, actually. Uh, mostly they're about um, offering recognition and respect. Uh, you know, we want to counter this doctrine of discovery um, with the true story of the peoples who have always been here being told. Uh, erasure is real. And uh, yeah, we're still here. We might not be on our territory, but we're still here. And I think it's important to note that. Uh, it's also important to create a broader public awareness of the histories, this colonial, colonial history that has led to this moment. And uh, it's, it's a tough history. It's not an easy read uh, and it's very uncomfortable and can be devastating when you really look at the extent of things that have happened and continue to happen because this is an ongoing history. It's not over, it's still happening. Uh, so, you know, asking yourself, looking at what these, what the words are being expressed to you and looking at, you know, what, what is this colonial history where I am and how does that impact me and how does that privilege who I am? Uh, and, you know, be, it's just get comfortable with being uncomfortable. It, it, it's difficult. It does get a little bit easier. <laughs> It's hard at first, that's for sure, but it <laughs> yes. doesn't, it's not as, it doesn't stay, it, it isn't always as heavy as it can feel initially. There's always the weight, but it, it doesn't always keep you down. Uh, it, there's also, it's a way of also beginning to repair relationships with Indigenous communities and with the land, you know, recognizing that we all are treaty people and we all have a relationship to land, so can, looking into our you know, really doing, being self-aware and self-reflecting in terms of what that means for yourself uh, and uh, what that means uh, to the land. Uh, it also supports larger truth-telling and reconciliation efforts, which is also a word that uh, can get thrown around without any real backup. So just being aware of when people are talking about that is their action. Um, reminding people that colonization, yes, it's an ongoing process. Indigenous lands are still occupied due to deceptive and broken treaties. And even in, and that's assuming that the treaty was ever honored in the first place. So uh, yeah, be looking into the histories of those treaties as well is important. Uh, it's also a way of taking a cue from indigenous protocol by opening up space with reverence and respect. Uh, and it inspires an ongoing action or it inspires ongoing action and recognition of the relationships that we all have to each other. So on that note, that's sort of my, what I like to do instead of uh, a land acknowledgement is talking about that, you know, it's about belonging, uh, reminding ourselves that land is alive, it's living, it has agency and we have, we owe it to the land to respect that. And that it ultimately comes down to truth. And if that means looking into the history, then that's what you have to do. So on that note, thank you for my pseudo land acknowledgement. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to inter or I'd like to let or, in or invite River to uh, introduce himself. Jean Le Glitch, uh, thank you so much, Kaylin, for your really beautiful words on, um, and I think land acknowledgements really should be more like the way you do them because they actually you know, acknowledge the reconcile, you know, what reconciliation should be with Indigenous peoples in Canada. 
Um, and I also have to agree with, yes, they definitely should be, uh, with some of the other panels definitely should be like this more often. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. Um, so uh, I'm River, I'm going to be the moderator of the panel tonight. Um, first, I'm going to introduce myself in Anishinaabemon, um, and then I will translate that real quick, um, talk a bit more about myself, and then I will be introducing the panelists. Okay, I'm also still kind of learning Anishinaabemon, so I might butcher it a little as well. <laughs> but hey, ancestors, I'm sure appreciate that I'm trying, so that's what matters, right? That's how we bring language back. Okay. Um, so I was just saying hello, greetings. Uh, my name is River. My spirit name, which is based on my chosen name is River, um, is Great River in the Shinabe Moen. Um, I am also mixed race uh, in the Shinabe Turtle Clan and Metis. Um, and I uh, was, I grew up and currently live um, in Hamilton, Ontario, which also uh, occupies the, uh, the, the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe uh, and neutral peoples, um, also covered by the Fish with One Spoon Wampum and the Upper Canada Treaty. Um, it's a small world, we're not too far away from each other. Um, yeah, um, so I guess I kind of wanted real quick kind of like before I introduce myself a little bit more, I just kind of wanted to speak about, I guess, my, my own ancestors. And um, I was also displaced as well. Many of us are, um, unfortunately, because of colonization. Um, so I, I grew up here in Southern Ontario, even though um, my Indigenous Métis ancestors um, and family are from our um, our traditional, um, from the Métis traditional homelands uh, out west and um, the uh, stolen Algonquin territories in Quebec. Um, and then, um, like I mentioned, I'm also mixed race as well. Um, so my mom's family was also impacted by, by colonization um, in some ways as well. Um, I'm a descendant of uh, of uh, an escaped uh, slave from the uh, the Atlantic slave trade, um, the African <laughs> specifically, is probably from West Africa, but because of colonization, we don't even know. Um, but he escaped um, into Canada to escape slavery in the 1830s and actually settled in Hamilton. And my family became one of the uh, the Holland family um, became one of the first Black families to settle in Hamilton. Um, and then um, my I'm also third generation um, Ukrainian Canadian as my grandmother uh, and her family um, were escaping from um, Soviet occupation of Ukraine into Canada. And so I'm very, I'm, even though I'm thankful to be here, but at the same time, um, colonization is everywhere. I think that's very much what I've learned. Like it's not just in the, Amer it's not just in the Americas, it, it exists everywhere and we have so many I think me existing as a, as a mixed race Anishinaabe Métis person, um, I'm very much at the crossroad of those intersections. Um, which in a way I'm like, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for things like colonization, but at the same time, it's also still has it's done a lot of things, you know? So I'm just here existing, doing my best. Um, so before I move, thank you, <laughs> with which, um, so before I move on, um, uh, words, sorry. Before I move on to introduce the panelists, um, I'm just going to also mention that I'm also Chief Spirit um, and I'm a peer support and outreach worker with the mental health team at Dejuana Desney's Aboriginal Health Center in the Hamilton and Niagara regions. Um, and uh, I've been with them for about six months. Um, and uh, I would consider myself uh, working pretty hard to support Chief Spirit and in Indigenous LGBTQIA plus communities in Southern Ontario. Um, so that's how I ended up here. But enough about me. Thank you for listening now. Um, I'm going to introduce our old wonderful panelists. Oh, thank you, Oki. I appreciate that. I'm going to introduce you first because you're the first <laughs> one on my screen. <laughs> so um, Linda Burgess, um, who's also known as Oki, that's how I, I know her. Um, her spirit name is Moontree Woman. Um, 
and she is a First Nations Choctaw woman from the Choctaw. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I apologize about during that a little bit. Uh -oh. freeze. Community of the Elder and very much a pillar, pillar of the, sorry. Oh, we're good. Yeah, yeah, just chipped out. Would you want to start over the introduction? Oh, I think it, did that, it cut out? All. Okay, yeah. thank you. No problem. Yeah, so I'm, I didn't get that far anyway. Um, yeah, so she's introducing our lovely panelist, Linda, who also goes by Oki. Um, her spirit name is Moon Tree Woman, and she's a First Nations uh, Choctaw woman from the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Um, she's a community elder and very much a pillar in the community. Um, she shares the teachings with a focus on the historical and spiritual world to spirit people. Um, you can also see her speaking at various um, public speaking ventures, drumming with the strong water women and likely sharing a one-on-one -on -one supportive conversation. Thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. Yeah, okay. um, so next, um, let's see, let me back here. Next we have um, Nino Kasi, I hope I'm pronouncing that right as well. Um, Nino Kasi is uh, born and raised in Toronto, uh, Ontario. Um, Nino is a Afro-Indigenous um, Two-Spirit queer wife in Mother Free and is an activist for Black, Indigenous, and 2S LGBTQI plus rights through media, uh, mixed media music. I definitely, um, definitely want to check out some of your work. It sounds really cool. Um, I, was, I didn't um, know of you before, uh, before the panel, so super excited to um, hear like your really, I think your really unique perspective here are so many intersections as well. Thank you so much for that. And I'm also Ukrainian and- uh, Oh, no way. I'm just oh, wondering maybe we're so cousins, like literal. Maybe. <laughs> we'll figure out the doctor, so. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, my family still practices some, some Ukrainian cultural traditions as well. So I kind of grew up with that intersection of mostly, you know, the black and kind of Ukrainian cultures as opposed to, I'm reconnecting indigenous, so. That's so cool. So real. Thank you for sharing. Um, and lastly, um, we have uh, Chickadee. So um, Mom and Chickadee is a twin spirit um, from the Eastern Métis Nation, with uh, their root nations being the Mohawk Rohan of Six Nations of the Grand River and the Abenaki Odenak Reserve of the Rabenaki Confederacy. They have grown up and currently reside in the District 1 Spoon Wampon Territory, specifically between uh, sorry, specifically in the Between the Waters Purchase, they first questioned their gender at age 10 and began identifying as a transgender man, man seeing man and woman as the only two options. Since reconnecting with their culture and learning more about gender science, they realized there's so much more to the beautiful spectrum of gender. Today, they openly identify as a gender fluid twin spirit. Yeah, I So with the, the questions itself. Um, so the first question, um, and I'll probably likely go with uh, Oki, uh, Nino, and then Chickadee, because that's in the order on my screen. Um, in terms of... Uh, for uh -oh. <laughs> So sorry for the technical issue. Um, it wasn't my internet. I think I just accidentally closed the tab while trying to open something else. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway, um, we'll start with Oki first for this question um, and then we'll probably rotate, I'll switch it up. Um, and so the first question, if you need me to repeat anything, please let me know by the way to the panelists. Um, so our very first question is in your own words, describe what two spirit is and what it means to you. Oki, you have a floor. Thank you, Yanko Key. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself, and then you may have to reiterate the question. Hashinanuk um, Anya Iti Ohoyo, Sia Chata, Sia Two Spirit, Sia Bear Clan. I forgot how to say that. Um, I do good to say, speak my language. I'm probably not getting it correct because. I just have to go by what I'm learning, and um, I do good to speak English, but uh, that was, uh, what I said was I am Moon Tree Woman, 
and I am Two-Spirit, and I am Bear Clan, and I am Choctaw. So now, uh, what it means to be Two-Spirit, for me personally, I cannot speak for anyone else, but this is a journey, this is a path, this is for, for every individual, you have to go your own way. You can get the teachings. I grew up without my language, without my teachings. I just knew I was Indian. That's what I was called in school. And I felt different. I didn't feel like I felt fit in. And I knew I liked girls at a young, very young age. But I grew up in church and I was, it was a Pentecostal church. And it was blasphemy. It was, you're going to hell. You're going to, you know, and I was so confused and I had no one to talk to. So having mental health um, wellness, as we like to call it, to be able for young people to try and discover who they are and their path um, as a two-spirit person or lesbian or gay. I know there are a lot of indigenous people that do not, do not um, classify themselves as two-spirit and that's okay because they have their own walk. Um, it's important that you make that walk between you and creator or you and God, whomever you, you um, uh, believe in your higher power. We all have to walk a different path. We all have lessons to learn from this. Um, I don't know how to explain it other than the, the being too spirit is an individual walk with your higher power, finding who you are inside of you and what your purpose is. And the main thing is always keep an open mind and love in your heart and be accepting. And you're not going to always be accepted. And that's okay. Because in my words and a friend's word, and I have a shirt that says it on the back, creator's got my back. You know, you don't have to please anybody except creator and yourself. If you're not happy in here, not know who you are, you're going to be lost. You're going to be in limbo. And I did that for many, many years. So this day and time, I stayed in the closet so for so long because I was I, I grew up in a redneck town in Oklahoma, and I was really kind of scared. But I was a tomboyish too, so now I would fight the boys. So I'm you know like ah, you made me mad. I'm going to hit you. <laughs> but it, it it's all in the perspective of your personal walk with creator or God or Buddha or whoever you, you know, you have to find that connection. It's up to you to do, you know, I, I can, every, every one of us could lend information or, or some of the knowledge that we have, but when it comes down to it, it's you and, and your higher power that has to have that connection because you will grow and you will, you will, you will become who you're supposed to be. It took me almost, what, years to finally say, okay, I am who I am, and I won't go back in the closet. I'm, I'm not going to. You can't make me. Um, and what was the other part of that question? Um, you answered basically, basically all of it. So right. you're good. Well, <laughs> Next, is that okay? Is that yes. good? Because yes. I think it's a personal walk. I think no, it was finding beautiful. your identity, who you are. You know, and being being someone you're not is so uncomfortable and you feel like you're betraying yourself and creator or God and the rest of the world. So when you can come to grips of who you are, you know, uh, I think that's I think that's the, the, the connection. I think that's that's the end answer. I can't walk your walk. You can't walk my walk. I don't think you would have wanted to. <laughs> but. There you go. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, Oki, um, for, for sharing, you know, your, your story of your journey with us. It sounds like you've come such a long way. And um, I think, you know, a lot of us younger two spirits have, have a lot to learn from, from your experience. Cause you've people, you know, two spirit people like you have helped pave the way for us. Right. Okay. And we're going to continue to, we're going to continue to do the same for the next seven generations as well. Yes. That's that our role and responsibility. Yes, it is. Um, so next, I'm going to have, um, uh, let's see, I'll have, uh, you know, speak, speak next. Um, so I'll just repeat the question for everyone. 
Um, and that question is, um, in your own words, um, what is two spirit and what does it mean to you? Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself, Ani Bojo, Nenokasi Indijinakas, Ajijak Kodem, Tokanto Indijiva. And I want to give a shout out to everyone on here who is learning the language and allowing themselves to return home. That is absolutely beautiful. And even just a sound, um, it encompasses the whole language. So if you even, you know, just embrace it and love it. Um, so what is two spirit? And so in my view, it depends on who's asking and what uh, setting I'm in. Um, generally, when I introduce myself as a two spirit person, it's about role and responsibility. Um, I personally detach it from sexual identities and orientations. Um, but I also know that the term two spirit is a term that was created to fit um, gender boxes. Um, specifically for Indigenous people. Um, so again, it depends if I'm around queer community, unicorn community, and I'm representing Indigenous peoples, the two-spirit is coming out. But in the way that I walk and present with it is about roles and responsibilities. It's not about um, um, something that I, I try to explain a lot is that um, being two-spirit has nothing to do with being heterosexual or not. You can be heterosexual and be, be able to encompass um, abilities that other folks tend to not have. Like, you know, we all we all have like a role. Like, some of us are hunters, our teachers, our gatherers, our um, workers. Uh, you know, two two spirit people tend to be people who have multiple capacity, multiple understanding, multiple um, ability to like, to take on more than the average. To have the compassion or the understanding. Um, more than others and two spirit people were highly respected, are highly respected and need to be respected. Um, they, uh, they've been here since time immemorial and just um, as it was mentioned earlier about colonization and that having an impact. Um, we, we use this term so loosely and we don't even recognize amongst all the hundreds and thousands of tribes that we have, there isn't really a word for it. And if there is, it's definitely not in English. So again, it's just, it really depends on who you're picking and which day and what crowd. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, I definitely think um, in my own experience as well that um, what two spirit means and when I use that term is very much contextual because um, I find yeah in some some spaces some you know so even in in queer spaces uh, or even trans spaces like some days I'm like yeah I'm, I'm really rocking that two spirit you know? but other days I'm just like too exhausted to be able, you know to explain that because yeah like you were you were saying you know like it's it's contextual there's a lot of history behind it um and it's it's really, yeah, it's kind of complicated and that's why, and different for everyone. And that's why we're, that's why we're here, right? This is why this panel exists is to talk more about that. Um, and I think it's really interesting that you, um, you know, you kind of, I've never really heard that, um, that perspective before about, you know, that, um, but I definitely I, I agree with it to an extent. Um, I think, you know, in, in some ways there's there's very much the kind of, if you identify as two-spirit, then like that's just an automatic assist, you know, people just in their head, just that's an automatic association for being, you know, LGBTQ, I plus, um, but I mean, that's not always necessarily the case. And like lots of indigenous people who identify as two-spirit don't necessarily identify with, you know, the LGBTQ community um, or they do. And it's, I think two-spirit identity is so, is so nuanced and I think kind of, you know the perspective you, you know the perspective you're sharing. You know I think really speaks well to that. Um, you know our, you know our roles and responsibilities and our, our experiences as two spirit people um, transcend you know um, transcend sexuality and transcend gender and transcend you know um, what often is Western um, kind of perspectives on gender and sexuality. Um, so that's really beautiful. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us tonight. Um, lastly, for this question before we move on, um, it'll, uh, I'll give it to Chickadee, but first, um, just noting there is uh, something in the chat. Um, so if you have, it's to all attendees, so if you have any questions for the panelists, please use the Q&A feature um, at the bottom of your screen if you're on a, um, uh, like a desktop. 
um, to submit any questions you have uh, for our Q&A session at the end of the webinar tonight. Um, so without further ado, um, Chickadee, I'll have you take the floor this time. Again, just to remind people the uh, question was just um, in your own words, describe what two spirit is and what it means to you. But I know Chickadee, you also use the term twin spirit as well. So please feel free to touch on that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I'll just also introduce myself. Um, Sigal Kitsugi Gilhasi Um I speak uh, for my introduction both Mohawk and then say my name in Abenaki. Um, so I just said hello, my name is Robin Chickadee. Um, and yeah, I, I, my nations have been introduced already, and I, I do come from the uh, Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement territory, specifically the between the waters purchase. So, um, and those waters mean a lot to me as a twin spirit, so I like to acknowledge them. Um, for me, the term twin spirit is also extremely nuanced and it depends on who I'm talking to if I'm going to mention it or not. Um, because for me, and these are just my teachings, I had a, a lot of specific elders uh, that had their own path carved as well. And, um, so for me, me uh, being a twin spirit is more of a role in society, um, in uh, indigenous society specifically, like just because that's what we're, what we've had. And indigenous societies, um, not only in Turtle Island, but across the world. Um, I also have Celtic background, so I, I identify a lot with the pagan tradition. And uh, I don't believe that the, the term is twin spirits, but, uh, our people who we call twin spirits are also honored in the Celtic tradition. Um, and the role for me is one of, if you have the gift to see both sides of an argument, that was what the main thing that twin spirits did was, and my, my elder, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you how my elder told me, um, People used to line up outside the wigwam to talk to twin spirits. And most of the time, the twin spirits would just restate the argument from their partner's point of view. And that was the end of it. And then they'd go on and everybody would be happy. Um, so with that comes a lot of other ceremonial gifts, um, holding certain ceremonies for people, um, being a stonehopper. Um, which in my teachings is someone who doesn't quite fit in any one specific role, but is there to be in any role that's needed at the time. Um, and that, that's a big part of my life is that, that stonehopper teaching, hopping from stone to stone, from place to place and helping people. Um, for me, that's the role of a twin spirit. Um, we are warriors. We are people who help people. And we we have these gifts of seeing different sides. And I think that the term twin spirit is the best thing to honor that in most cases. Um, I also identify with the, the term gender fluid as well. Um, but I see that as different than twin spirit. I see twin spirit more as a societal role and less of a gender role or a gender itself. It, in my teachings, is a societal role. Um, Yahweh, thank you. Thank you for um, uh, Nale, um, for sharing some of those um, beautiful teachings from your from your elders, Chickadee. Um, I think it's really I think there's going to be a lot of conversation tonight about how you know um, it has to do with how the came to be, um, <clears throat> but how prior to colonization, um, because unfortunately, um, colonization brought in homophobia, biphobia, and transphobia to many of our communities. Um, and some of the other panelists, have, some of the panelists have already spoken to the fact that um, prior to colonization, like many, you know, two spirits and, and twin spirits, um, people who were in those roles uh, were, were seen as important members of their, of their communities um, and had many in, important roles as well. Um, 
So I think it's really important to speak on that. And I was actually very thankful that I had the opportunity to receive um, some teachings as well on, on uh, Two-Spirit uh, roles and responsibilities from um, a Two-Spirit Anishinaabe elder in my community today. Um, by coincidence, through through my work at De Duana Desne, so I'm, I'm very, very thankful to have those two, and it definitely echoes some of the teachings that other people have shared. Um, so I think it's interesting that, um, you know, compared to say, um, you know, lesbian, gay, bi, trans, like identities and kind of what they mean for for non-indigenous people. Um, with being two-spirit, there's, it can be, you know, a gender or sexuality identifier. And again, it isn't always, but there's also in our societies, it's it's not necessarily about, you know, having to label or gender or sexuality, but it's about specifically about the roles and responsibilities and the perspectives that we bring as two-spirited people, two spirit, two-spirited people. Um, that are in, in one of the one of the teach one of the very first teachings I received about um, being two spirit when I was learning more about that about two three years ago um, was from an initial a knowledge keeper, um, and he said that um, you know Creator gave you the gift of being able to see multiple in like with two eyes or in basically the idea is that like two spirit people are able to see from many different perspectives and point of views and that's why often we're you know we're some kind of, you know, we're community leaders, we're counselors, we're medicine people, um, we're ceremonial leaders, the list goes on and on. Um, it's because we're, we're able to see from so many different sides. And that's, that's a gift that was given to us by Creator. That was the teaching that I received. And it was really beautiful because that was the first time I felt like very proud to, with, you know, to be associated with the Two-Spirit identity. Um, so thank you all for for all the perspectives you've shared so far, especially because a lot of them are pers very personal journeys as well. Um, to, to do that, so thank you. Um, I just am, I had the questions pulled up, I apologize. I don't know what happened to them, but I am just about to find them. Um, and then we will move on to our next question. Um, just as a reminder, if you, the Q and A function, so that uh, we can address them later on. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Um, so our second question, actually, I kind of touched a bit on this already. I was pretty sure this was the next question. But um, the question is, um, many non-Indigenous peoples think that being Two-Spirit is synonymous with, being, with just being both Indigenous and part of the LGBTQ community. In your opinion, what similarities does Two-Spirit share with LGBTQ community and what are the differences between them? Um, and I'm going to have Nino speak first this time. Um, and if you need to repeat the question, please let me know. Yeah, and the question, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Uh, the question is in the chat if people are wanting to read it. Oh, wonderful. Um, thank you. Yes, Helen had put it up and I'm also reading it. Um, <clears throat> so... What, is, what are some similarities about being two spirits and with the LGBT community, excuse me. And um, what are some of the differences? Okay. Yep. So I think, again, so for myself, like I had mentioned, I view the, um, those to be two separate things um, where I find that the LGBT, sorry, I'm going to just call it what I call it, the magical unicorn bowl of, <laughs> amazing people. Um, everybody has their way to identify and unicorns are magical and people are magical. So that's how I feel. And it just saves me from mislabeling anybody as I'm still learning. Um, so again, uh, being too spirit for me is roles and responsibilities and sexual identities and orientations are another thing. But if we want to talk about the similarities, um, they tend to both be outcasts. Um, within society, within culture, within religion. Um, there's a lot of lack of understanding that these are people's spirits, regardless of how they present themselves or the people they choose to love. Um, that this is not something that you can change. Like you are who you are. Um, it's innate, it's within us. Um, so for me, that's what I feel like the similarities are. I'm sure someone else can maybe touch onto something that I'm not thinking about right now. Um, and the things that I feel are 
are different about them. Again, it's also about the person who is stating. Again, I feel like it's a role and responsibility, for example, um, with Indigenous community. Um, I've learned about firekeeping, which tends to be uh, a masculine role for society's terms and understanding. Um, I'm a big drummer. Um, these are things that you're not really supposed to do, depending on the nation you're coming from. Um, people who identify as women or female, um, which I do, in some nations, you're not even allowed to touch the drum. You know, so like those are just some small um, ways um, in terms of role and responsibility. Um, and in terms of uh, the differences with um, LGBTQ, it's more, um, I find it to be more about a discovery of um, what makes you happy, what makes you feel whole. Um, like with being two spirit, like that's something that's gifted to you and you can't like evade it, you can't leave it, it's stuck with you. Um, and, and there's going to be hardship with that, learning those roles and responsibilities. But I think with, um, being queer identified, it's about understanding who I am and how I'm walking in this world with mm, my partner or the people that I love. I identify as polyamorous, but I'm monogamously married to my wife. Um, so there's all these other things that um, fall into sexual identities and orientations, which completely detaches what that means for me as two spirit. Um, I'll leave it up to someone else to fill some more of those things in. No, thank you, Mino. Um, I mean, I think you touched on uh, lots of important things too, um, especially about how you know some kind of like Western perspectives on our understanding of gender and sexualities have kind of seeped into our, our traditional roles in our communities for what it means for, you know, what roles are, are for men and what roles are for women and where does that leave, you know, two spirit people, right? And I think that's really awesome that you've got to learn how to do bio keeping and, and got to do like, you know, water drumming stuff. Cause that's something I've, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, for me, like that's, I'm definitely more, um, I'd say in, in terms of my roles and responsibilities anyway, like I feel kind of more connected to stuff that's particularly labeled as more masculine, like those things, for example. But um, I haven't unfortunately had the, had the opportunity to do those things because it's, unfortunately, there's, there's obviously changes and some things are getting better, but um, with, I guess, the, the knowledge keepers that I've met in, in, in my spaces, I haven't had that, um, because they don't necessarily read me as masculine. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to experience those things. And I think that's a really important thing to talk about as well, but I'm very, it makes my heart like very, you know, full and happy that you've gotten to do that. Um, I also think it's really interesting that you touched on, you know, kind of the, the polyamory piece as well, because yeah, like the idea of what sexuality is, and like I studied this a lot in, in my undergrad in university, um, I did social work, but I also studied other things. Um, and it's so much more than just who you're attracted to. It's it's so much more nuanced than that. And I'm actually in a similar boat in terms of uh, my own uh, you know, relationship with polyamory as well, similar to you. So, um, and I, I see that as actually connected to my two spirit identity as well. Um, but that's not something people talk about a lot. So I'm, I'm really happy you shared that with you. Um, next we'll um, have uh, we'll have chickadee. Um, and so again. or the, the magical unicorns um, <laughs> sorry. Um, and what are the so what are the similarities between two-spirit and LGBTQ communities and what are the differences between them yeah for sure uh Yowie, um for me I find in my teachings that a lot of LGBTQIA plus etc folk are twin spirits that do identify as twin spirits in native communities um, because that can sometimes lend to seeing from different perspectives. And that can sometimes bring those gifts forward a little bit quicker. Um, but I also know of uh, straight folk and cis folk who identify like straight cis folk who identify as twin spirit, but because of different things like polyamory and uh, different uh, concepts of those gifts that we have, especially with ceremonial leaders. I, I once read about a, a woman 
who identified as a, it was a cis woman, identified as a woman, but really, really connected with the grass dance. And her path told her to do it. And her elders said, do it. And she, she identifies as twin spirit because of that connection. Um, so um, for me, the, the similarities are that they, they often, LGBTQIA folk often do identify as twin spirit, uh, but the, for the differences, I would say that um, not all LGBTQIA folk are twin spirits, just because uh, someone's native and LGBTQIA plus does not mean that they identify as twin spirit. Um, they may fulfill the role in their society of a traditionally just masculine role or a traditionally just feminine role, and they may not blend certain things that bring us to twin spirits, which often blends different practices. Um, and I find that that blending is the, the similarity of blending to make your own path is also another similarity. Um, LGBTQIA folk, um, like before I knew I was native, because I didn't grow up with my culture. Um, I, oh, sorry. I have a thing where I blank out. Um, no problem, Chickadee, if you take your time. Oh, where was I going? Um, um, you were speaking a bit um, about how kind of before for that um you were speaking about how you know um you can be like native and maybe say lgbtq but that doesn't necessarily mean that like you're two spirit or your twin spirit and you were speaking about how um in your own person mm, um you were mentioning about you just coming to learn about your indigeneity uh, and it's okay yeah. I, I space out too yeah, sorry, I'm trying to figure out the, the path that I was going with that. Um, but it, my uh, thing just makes things go totally away. Um, yeah, um, first, uh, like after I found out that I was indigenous, I definitely identified with the, the term twin spirit. But before that, I still identified with a lot of the gifts that I have now and that I achieved a like more, um, I got more out of those gifts once I um, be identified as twins. But before that, I, um, yeah, my head is playing with me. So I think I've said that what I need to say, thank you. Perfect. I'm not too sure if River's internet is uh, is with us. <laughs> so, uh, Lynn, uh, uh, oh, I see Linda, but I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, same question. I'll oh, so yeah, thanks, Chickadee. And I was thinking, too, that maybe, like, as um, Oki is talking, there, you know, some maybe something might come back to you, so just let us know, uh, and that might help. Uh, Cause yeah, I don't know about you, but COVID is wearing on my mental. So <laughs> I, can, I can, I can definitely relate. Uh, but okay. So uh, yeah, many non-Indigenous people think that being two-spirit is synonymous with just being both Indigenous and part of the LGBTQ plus community. In your opinion, what similarities does two-spirit share with LGBTQ plus community, the uh, community and uh, what are the differences between them? Well, first of all, I personally feel like all beings, all human beings, male, female, straight, gay, lesbian, two-spirit, transgender, queer, <laughs> did I leave ever? Plus, um, we're all one. You know, we make up the circle. And when you have a circle, that circle can't be broken because you're all in it together. But I know from the teachings that two-spirit people do have gifts that creator gave them. One of the reasons is because we have to walk a really rough road. You know, we're living in two different worlds, male and female. Um, it's not accepted. Like 
I know the histories. We've always been here. Our two spirited people, they did hold very high respected. They were counselors. They were nurses, doctors, uh, medicine people. They were everything you could think of. And everybody wanted to come go to them and talk to them because because creator gave them that insight. And we do have that gift. I believe everybody's born with it. Not everybody uses it. Um, I think there are people that that live their whole life knowing inside that they're more than heterosexual. They're they're attracted to both sexes or or they fall in love with the heart, not the body, not the sex. It's a spiritual love between two beings. That's my belief. Um, And I have met some non-Indigenous peoples um i do not want to offend anyone but they're non-indigenous in in um, they're caucasian did i say that right (laughs) trying to be mindful and respectful uh and 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 i made jokes about it but I did it with love. I wanted it to be with love. And I would say, you know what? She's a white gal. You know, she's a great person because I know her personally. It's not her fault that creator decided to have her come back as a white woman. (laughs) And she was good with that. She loved it. You know, I was waiting for her to get all upset. And it's like, no, she thought it was funny. And and, and that's one of the things I've been labeled as the sacred clown. And I think that goes with, with all Two people, two spirited peoples. I think Creator gave us that that sacred clown, and um, I think the difference is. I know back in the, if I can remember, it was like at the Bates uh, LGBTQ plus. Um, they had they had their 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 big. Uh, conference and that's where they came out with um the word to spirit and and what you know it meant to indigenous peoples that was our very own little you know like i think i think society and the world has taken enough from us i think it's time for us to say no more and we need to take our rifle. We were we were pushed out of our communities out of our families lives out of because we had to live a certain other way. They took our land, they took our language, they took our, our traditions, they took our babies. They took our, they tried to break us. They tried to wipe us out, but we are resilient. Just like, like, like you just have this, this feeling creator goes, you cannot give up. You have work to do for the next generations. You had people working for you before and now it's your time to do the work and now you have to teach those so they can keep going on. And one day, one day, I'll be able to look and go, this is what creator meant for us all to love one another, truly help one another, and do it, do it with this, because we're all connected. We're all related. Some people won't agree with that, but, and we all walk a different path and we all have responsibilities i know as a two-spirit person i was trained or or taught from a she was not two-spirit person but she was an advocate and she was indigenous and she told me you can do anything that a man's responsibility is supposed to be because you are two-spirit and you carry both both energies both both and i went really i've always been like connected with the fire i'm connected with the moon and i'm connected with creator and the universe and the people i love people i want the best for all people there's some people i don't like but i want we need to know that they they need they have to have the best too you know and and our our responsibility our responsibilities that's to to spirit people is not just knowing the 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 male's roles but we also have the female roles 
You know, the men are responsible for the fire. The women are responsible for the water. But we're all responsible for Mother Earth. You know, she's sick. We, she can heal herself. She can live without us. We can't live without her. We have one shot, one shot only. And um, I just, my hopes and my dreams and my, my faith, my belief is one day I might be in Sky World, but I'll look down and say, oh, thank you, creator. I've waited for this day. I've waited for people to come together and love one another and, and, and accept our differences. We can still, I know people I dislike, but I love them. You know, I love them, but I dislike them. You don't have to, you don't have to like them to love them, but you have to love them. Uh, and um, I hope I answered that. Um, it, it's, it is, it's almost about like being too spirit because of society. But I think once, once we can finally listen with our ears, see with our eyes and feel with our hearts, I think that's when unity comes. And I think that's when we can come together and for the good of the world, everybody should ha have what they need. We shouldn't have homeless people. We should not have six nations out there without water. How many years? That hurts my heart. But we are to work to make sure it happens. And we will, because we're going to take our power back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, go. Okay. Yeah. It was like, um, yeah. No, it was like, I think too, I think, cause like, I, you know, it's like, it, like I said before, it's, it's, it's been, a, it's, it's been quite a year. Right. And uh, on top of like, for so many reasons, like we don't even have enough time to talk about how many reasons why this past year has been so messed up. Um, but you know, but I think like, and you can get lost and feel lost. And I think that like the, the site that you mentioned of, you know, being like, no, like it's, the looking back and the looking forward, but really thinking and sitting with that and what that means, I feel like that can give so much direction when when there's like nowhere to go. <laughs> Literally, I haven't seen, I saw one friend in the last two months, like, you know, like there's nowhere to go, right? But like, but you know, like I, I think that, that that that's definitely something that I'm gonna take away. Uh, and maybe some others will too when when things don't seem as, you know, bright as spring. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much. Uh, okay. And then I just wanted to give this, I just wanted to give uh, a moment for just to see Chickity, if there's anything else that you'd like to add before I hand it over to River. Cool. River, take it away. Just realized I was on mute. Thank you. Um, I was having some technical issues, so, uh, Caitlin stepped in, super appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to comment on kind of one more thing, um, as well to what some of the other, um, some, some of the panelists are speaking to, um, kind of like what Oki was saying, you know, the, the elder, the two-spirit elder that I got to listen to today was um, speaking a lot about clans and how, you know, our clan systems are a way for us to know what our roles and responsibilities are, you know, in pre-colonization um, in, in our communities. Um, but a lot of people don't know their clans and, and therefore don't know their um, specific roles and responsibilities that, um, are required of us to to protect our mother to protect our mother earth um, and to protect um, everything that is uh, you know a sacred part of creation um, and he was kind of saying too that um, you know two spirit people are often the the water walkers um, and the warriors and the land defenders like modern day warriors that's what that's that's what they are they're on the front lines um, you know protecting protecting our protecting our mother earth. Um, and we're, you know, um, with colonization, unfortunately, a lot of, you know, a lot of our teachings have been lost and a lot of indigenous peoples in general have been, you know, myself included, I'm still learning as well. I've been kind of straight off from the, this is the teaching I have anyway, but I've been straight off our path, um, you know, by the, to live a good life and, and to live by the, the instructions of the creator, which is to ultimately, um, you know, treat other people with respect and kindness and, and care about other people and and um, care for our mother earth as well. And those are just a few examples I could go on, but um, you know, I think I leading this change. 
for doing it. Um, and, you know, that's why it's so important for us to know what our roles and responsibilities are and for our communities to know that, to know that as well. Um, and not even our own communities, but just everybody in general, because we're, we're all living together <laughs> on, this, on this planet and it's up to, you know, each and every one of us to work towards um, ensuring that we're able to continue to live our, live our lives and make sure people are, are, are you know, healthy and, um, and have their needs met and are safe. And like, you know, Oki was saying as well, like we only have one plan, we've only got one planet and it's this one. Um, and so that's why, you know, we can't have climate justice or, you know, environmental activism without indigenous peoples. Yeah. We are the, we are the ones, we, we are the guardians and we are the protectors of this earth. And we clearly, you know, the way things, Western, you know, capitalist societies have been doing things are clearly not working. So it's time that they listen to us. Um, I guess one more thing before I kind of move on to the next question. I'll be real quick, I promise. I don't mean to get ranty, um, <laughs> but I very much kind of was relating to, um, you know, some of the things that Oki was saying that like, you know, um, Again, everybody has their own experience, right? But for me, like, um, to give some examples, like me, I, I cut my hair pretty short back, like, uh, I don't know, like five, six years, five years ago now, um, when I was first questioning my gender because I was I was struggling with gender dysphoria associated with, you know, long hair being seen as feminine. Um, but then I started the process of regrowing it out, and it's like basically down to my butt now. I'm gonna be honest, but which is like amazing. Um, <laughs> But because it's taken like so long for that to grow back when that's like in my hair is a source of pride of, of you know, many of my ancestors, um, not just my indigenous ones. But for me, like, even though some days, unfortunately, like other people don't necessarily see it this way, but, you know, I see like my long hair is a masculine thing personally and, and even a gender neutral thing to an extent because like traditionally in our cultures, like everybody has long hair. I mean, in indigenous culture. Um, but I find myself still, you know, I find, I, I say I would, ex I experience somewhat some gender fluidity depending on the day as well. But, you know, there's certain roles that I find in, in my own life that, um, you know, I kind of encapsulate more, you know, I feel more attracted to maybe, maybe a masculine role as opposed to a feminine role. Um, so for example, like I've gone through um, some gender, like I've gone through gender affirming surgery because that's what felt right to me. Um, and to live my life. And, um, and like even, you know, most, I would say non-indigenous people may confuse that, like I, you know, identify as being non-binary or gender fluid, um, but I still, feel and, and for the most part not very connected with me but um I have fur babies <laughs> and I prefer to you know refer to myself as their mom um and I feel very connected to motherhood um as a two-spirit person even though um for most say kind of you know trans people who are you know non-indigenous or not necessarily um you know um working towards a, a decolonization mindset, they would find that very confusing because that wouldn't fit into their rigid binaries of even what it means to be trans. Um, and that's something I've struggled with within the LGBTQ community as well. Um, so I think that's the really beautiful thing about being T-spirit. There's so many ways to be T-spirit. Um, and that's why we're having a panel because we it's such an individual experience. We all experience these things differently. And I love hearing everybody's perspectives because it's just so beautiful. And we're, you know, we're reclaiming your spaces. That's what the elder I talked to today was saying as well. Like, you know, for LGBTQ people, they're they're fighting to take up space in the first place and to have rights. But you know, we have these roles, and and we're respected, um, and we're important in our communities. But because of colonization um, and introducing homophobia and biphobia and transphobia, you know, we're we've had to we've had to fight to reclaim those roles and to reclaim our, our space. And that's, we need to spirit people in order to, you know, work towards decolonization efforts and to help people, you know, we're, we're also, um, you know, 
we're language keepers as well. Um, that's another teaching I was, I was also recently received. Um, we're, you know, again, we're, we're leaders in our communities. Um, and that's why we need to have panels like this to, to educate people both in our communities in our own indigenous communities and outside of them because um, so much has been lost. And so not everybody knows, so that's why we're here. Um, again, I'm losing track of time, um, but I'm just very passionate about the subject. <laughs> um, so moving forward, the uh, next question we have here is, um, actually kind of relates to what I was saying as well. Oh, hi, puppy. Oh, he is a dog, very cute. Um, fur baby. So the next, oh, hi, there's your fur baby, yeah. So um, the next question we have up is, um, if you had one thing that, oh, sorry, yeah. If you had one thing you wish that people would, people understood better about being Two-Spirit, what would it be and why? Um, so we're gonna, it's all. We're good to go, chickadee. Thank you. Um... Uh, yeah, um, for me, I think that the, a big thing for me is um, re uh, reclaiming that, that space for twin spirits in the way of people recognizing the power that we hold just being twin spirits. Uh, not only the spiritual and ceremonial power, but the physical power as well, and, and the, the mental power, the emotional power, the, the wisdom and the, the prowess that comes with those things. We do have those gifts, um, a lot of us. And I find that, um, oh, see, it happens more when I um, am nervous. And I, it happens and then I get nervous. Okay. I understand. Um, could you could you repeat the last thing I said? Oh, I did not. Un oh my gosh, I did not unmute, and I was actually just saying that I lost a little bit of track of what you were saying because my ADHD medication is wearing out, and then that also made me forget to unmute. Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, oh, I remember oh, now. You were speaking. Oh, you remember? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, um, because one of my teachings, um, because I'm in currently in a parenting group uh, with the uh, healing center, the Native Healing Center in my area. Um, I'm currently part of the parenting group, and we had an elder speak the other night. And one of the teachings that really resonated with me was um, that uh, during uh, uh, one of the times, and also when women are menstruating, uh, when people who menstruate are menstruating, um, I should correct myself there, um, that power, you take your own personal power and you times it by seven when those things are going on. And as a twin spirit, that's, that is going on all the time. That power amplification is going on constantly. So your power is amplified by seven, which is amplified by seven, which is amplified by seven, and so on and so forth. And I, I wish that um, people would recognize that um, we do know what we're doing. <laughs> Thank you, Nelly. Hi, I just have um, been turning off my uh, camera periodically just because of internet issues, but. Um, I really love that teaching you you shared about um, you know uh, just because I, I or just two spirit people in general sorry um, but talking about the same kind of powers people on um, as that was like constantly going on all the time like energy inside us and a lot of Two spirit people do whether that's you know ceremonial or, or traditional um or even doing you know things like counseling work for example like i do like we're not only carrying you know all this power and energy like of ourselves but we're carrying other people's as well um and sometimes that can be that can be really draining um 
carrying that carrying so many you know especially a lot of people's in, in the world that i in the work that i do in particular carrying a lot of people's you know stress and, and trauma and um the effects of colonization that they've they've experienced um so i, I really appreciate you sharing that um with us chickadee because I, I really resonated with that teaching as well that you shared um so next um i believe we will have oki speak next um Again, the question is, um, if you had one thing that you wish people better understood about being Chief Spirit, what would it be and why? It's also in the chat if you need it. Okay, I believe it would be um, knowing that we are human too, that we bleed real blood, that our heart hurts too, that we go through trauma and that we stay up late wondering how we're going to pay the rent tomorrow, wondering, am I going to get to eat tomorrow? Or if I eat tonight, maybe I should save it for tomorrow because I might not get to eat tomorrow. We go through everything everyone else does too. Like we, we sometimes will throw up, I do it. I should, shouldn't say we, but I think of myself as, okay, we, <laughs> we, we, um, but, but sometimes because things are happening around us, and this is a really, really hard um, journey to walk right now because I'm a hugger. I love hugs. And you, to me, I, I give my hugs, like, there's a meaning behind it. It's like my love. I'm going to give to you. And when people genuinely hug me back, I can feel that. I can feel it. And it makes us one, you know, like we understand each other. Um, I would like for people to understand that we have the same emotions. We have the same heartache. We have the same grief. We have everything everyone else does. And we're not like different in that way. You know, we're all you know, I throw up walls because I don't want people to see my pain or I get funny because I don't want to cry, you know, in front of people. I'm an ugly crier, so I don't like to cry in front of people. So I prefer to like cry away or sometimes I can't help it. It flows anyway and creators going, it's okay. Be yourself. People want to see the real you, not someone that's going to, you know, like pretend. But sometimes you got to pretend you have to show them how strong you are, too. You know, and I believe when you walk that walk, no matter who you are, this is for everyone. Um, I believe when you walk that walk, you need to be true to yourself. And as much as I wished it was an indigenous um, a phrase, I do believe in, in, in what Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. Because if you can't be true to yourself, you can't be true to creator and you cannot be true to everyone else. Did I get that right? Did I get all, all of that? Um, yeah. Except you absolutely did, Oki. You're good. You're good. Goodness. I promise. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's so important to, to speak on, especially because we're viewed as, you know, um, like, you know, we're viewed as having special gifts and we're viewed as, you know, leaders in our community and are expected to be strong and to care for other people, especially like in the work I do, for example, and I'm sure the work that you do as well, Oki, because I am familiar with what you do. Um, but even just in general, oh. even with, you know, our, our friends and our, our families and loved ones, like the last year has been really tough, tough for a lot, of, like, you know, for many of us. Um, and I think with the, the hug thing, I definitely resonate with that. I think a lot of other people it's healing. as well. But it, yeah, it's, it's healing and it's so hard not having, you know, that connection and like the work that I do with the indigenous community, it's so hard, like, you know, not being, you know, at the center and like, uh, you know, making food with people and like, yes. you know, giving people hugs and like, you know, you don't have an opportunity to really like transfer, I think, that that energy that you're holding uh, into helping that healing process. Um, and so I think, you know, it's important right now. I think it's okay to, to really let ourselves still, even a year later, you know, let ourselves experience grief of what has been lost because a lot has been lost and it's been hard mm -hmm. and it hasn't been easy. Um, but I definitely feel that pressure and I know many people do as well, just because of, you know, kind of Western beliefs about, um, you know, about grief and about, you know, when it's okay to cry and when it's not, because like that's, 
like it's been like scientifically proven that like crying you know and releasing that, that energy and releasing those feelings is is healing yes. um so i definitely and i know i struggle especially in public you know i feel like i have to like put on this kind of like front and like you know, always be that strong person, always be that rock, because I always have been, that's always been my role um, since I was a kid with my own family, um, a lot of it because of their their own trauma that they've been dealing with. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, okay, I think we really have to kind of like, yeah, like show our true selves, because like, for who I really am and not for what I try to put up. But I definitely struggled to cry in front of people and to cry in public, but or even in front of like my partner um, <laughs> who I live with. But um, that's something I'm also working towards every day as well to, to allow myself um, to have that, that energy release and to experience that healing as well. So thank you. Thank you so much, Oki, um, for your words. Um, Nino, I'll have you speak next. Um, the question again, just to remind you, also I love the hug chain thing, thank you <laughs> for hearing that. Um, so the question is, if you had one thing you wish that people understood better about being Two-Spirit, what would it be and why? Thank you. Um, sorry, if I'm just being a bit distracting in the background, I'm just making tobacco ties and keeping my hands busy um, because my mind is wandering and I really want to focus. So I do apologize if that's bothersome for anyone else. No problem. Um, you know, it's an accessibility need for you. It's whatever you need to do to be able to focus and, and to feel comfortable. And I thought you were making tobacco ties. I'm like, I'm making you yeah. like tobacco ties. But I love it. I love um, that you're making tobacco ties during a, during a two spirit panel. I think that's really cool. But I yeah, I get it. Energy and say so this is great. Yeah, energy. really great. Like um, beautiful, yeah. positive energy. I know I have to keep my hands busy too because of the ADHD. So no problem. No worries. <laughs> We share that together. It's a family thing. Um, so just to go back, to, <laughs> just to go back to that question. Um, so I'm going to separate it. One for non-Indigenous people. Um, it rubs me a little bit hard when people are knowing who are non-Indigenous. They're knowing that this is something that Indigenous people use to identify. I prefer that folks leave it alone. If you happen to be a non-Indigenous person and you find yourself attached to the term to spirit and you've been corrected about where it belongs, because it's okay to claim certain things, in my opinion, um, that's what makes individuals unique. Um, if you, you're now knowing, correct yourself and do better. Um, but I, also for our Indigenous community, to spare people are real people, you know, like they're, they're part of our community and we need to, we really need to separate personal pride and need to um, dehumanize people. I know that our communities are going through a lot of suffering. Um, I know that our communities are learning how to come back home, to follow their spirit back home, whatever that means. Um, but being unkind to our two-spirit folks who I find to be some of the most compassionate people who bleed and cry and feel and endure. Um, part of that responsibility and being a two-spirit person is knowing that you're taking on way more than you've ever bargained for and you do it for nothing, just, just for, and I can't say it's nothing, you, you're doing it for, because that's what you're supposed to do, that's your responsibility. Um, and it's, it, we're here, like we're all together, you know, like the more that we divide ourselves, the less we can do what we need to, to evolve and to grow and to expand who we are as a people. Um, and our ancestors don't approve. They don't like it. You're disrespecting them. You're disrespecting future ancestors. Like it's, it's not our way. And when we talk about like with, you know, with the Anishinaabe people, we have our seven grandfather teachings when you're taking any of those out of context or you are not following any of them or allowing yourself to grow with them, then you are really doing a lot of what the colonizer has set in place for us to dismantle ourselves so that they don't have to do it. Um, so my message is more so to our own community than it is to other folks because really we gotta pick our battles and really understand that some people are just gonna do what they wanna do. Um, 
And if I just bring a little light, um, the conversation I was having with a wonderful friend of mine um, who is queer, lesbian identified, and they're from Jamaica. And we're having this big, huge conversation about here in Canada, where we're so privileged, or in North America, where we're so privileged. And we fight about names that we want to call each other and the boxes that we have. Meanwhile, my brothers and sisters are being slaughtered and slain and beaten and murdered. You know, they seek asylum to come to places that here. So really, it doesn't matter at the end of the day what name we go by. It's that these are our kin. We are love, we are light, we are each other. And we are resilient. Like without our ancestors and all these teachings, we would not be here. And to downplay or to to reassimilate, you know, what we're trying to bring back just really doesn't, it really doesn't help us at all. Chi Miigwech, you know, um, I really, really resonated with what you had to uh, say. And I think, yeah, ultimately at the end of the day, like because language constantly evolves and changes, um, you know, no matter what we may decide to call ourselves, um, because ultimately that's just a way for us to communicate our, our own experiences to other people. But no matter what we, like you're saying, we're, we're all kin and we're all part of the sacred circle. We need to respect one another and, and take care and take care of each other and, um, you know, really uphold those seven grandfather teachings like you were, like you were speaking in order to, to make a better life and a, a better earth for everybody indigenous and non-indigenous and kind of just speaking back to what you were saying to kind of non-indigenous people um yeah like you know our like our roles our roles like two spirit um are incredibly sacred um and are cultural and they're you know not just or solely um you know uh rules for for gender and or sexual haven't you know, had opportunities to learn about what that actually is, then that's, you know, that's not really a term we should be using. <laughs> There's lots of, you know, I find for, for myself as someone who uses both kind of more Western labels um, for my gender sexuality as well as, as Two-Spirit, because for, for myself being Two-Spirit is my roles and responsibilities are, are connected to the experiences of, of gender and sexuality that I have to a degree. They connect, they both connect to being Two-Spirit for me personally. Um, oh shoot, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a, losing track of what I was saying because um, I'm getting rambly but the point uh, the point is is that um, yes I remember what I was saying now um, so the point is is that I also use some western labels as, as well to to describe my experiences of gender and sexuality because she spirit encompasses many things for me um, and it's also a is also a role and it's also a cultural thing it's a spiritual thing um, and there's I've found you know labels that non-Indigenous people can use that that are similar to, to my experiences of gender and sexuality. So like those, there are options outside of Two Spirit for non-Indigenous people. You just have to find them. Um, yeah, um, sorry, so we had, Okay, it looks like we're having a gap moment with the internet. Apparently minds and internet are all just all intertwined and none of us are on the same page. Oh, yay, we are. Okay, continue. Go ahead. Welcome back. <laughs> just kidding. Gotcha. <laughs> I got everyone. You were all fooled, myself included. I'm not good. It's amazing. Um, so I, I'm not going to lie. I also forgot who is supposed to be next. So there was, uh, has everybody spoken for this question? Yes. Has everyone already spoke? Oh, I think Chickadee went first. Oh gosh. I'm right. So See, I was like, I was um, like, so I'm like, did they go? Yeah. I don't <laughs> remember. For that question. It's getting late. It's right. been a long week. My brain is fried. I've got pandemic fatigue going on. Oh, man. We all got pandemic brains. Be real. Um, okay, well, glad everyone's spoken. Thank you, uh, Kaylin, for double checking on that. I also was having internet issues for like a second. So I was like, I'm not sure what's happening here. Is it, is it just me? What's, what's going on? Um, so moving forward, um, I guess I think we'll have Nino speak first for this one. Um, I should probably be writing this down. Um, so the question is, what do you think Indigenous peoples and non-Indigenous um, LGBTQ plus people, and even just like 
non-Indigenous people as a whole um, can do to be in solidarity and show support. Um, so generally speaking, what do you yeah. think people, you know, can? Yeah. Um, so I've what done can they a do lot to of... show um, solidarity? Thank you for that question. Um, so in Toronto, um, I'm very well known as um, a two-spirit and um, unicorn activist. Um, I did have the opportunity to um, lead Pride um, for a few years with our communities out here. Um, and one of the things that um, when um, this role and responsibility was brought to the table for me, it was about um, asserting acknowledgement around where um, the privilege in being open about being queer or trans or however you identify the, the uh, spectrum um, is rooted um, by the bodies and voices of black, black, um, black people, but also on indigenous land. So something that I had implemented was having before the pride festivities start off, it needs to be opened with ceremony need to start off in a good way um, and also having that closing ceremony and when it came to um, having the parade that the parade is opened in ceremony and two-spirit staff is involved and we had dancers from all over the place we had um, the national chief come out and other um, folks come out um, I think where I'm going with this is understanding that as we get to um, express ourselves openly in the physical or even just in here while being in this space, um, those who are not a part of the two-spirit indigenous community need to acknowledge like, you know, there's land acknowledgements and how it feels great to them, but also understand that before you're starting off with anything that you're acknowledging, you need to acknowledge black and brown bodies and the sacrifice that's been made. Um, yeah, I think that's where it, that's where I feel about that right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's incredible that you know with the work that you were doing with um, Pride Toronto, like you had all these like <laughs> like really come out. Um, that's that's incredible. And starting with ceremony, I'm like, oh gosh, I wish Hamilton would do that. Like I've never seen that. Here, our voices, and in, in, unfortunately, in the Hamilton community, two spirit, and even just Black and Brown voices in general, um, we tend to be Hamilton is a very white queer community, um, and or we kind of kind kind of tend to either be kind of on the wayside a lot of the time. Um, so that's just like it makes me really happy to to hear that you know that acknowledgement um, and you know in holding space for for Black and Brown people and and for Indigenous Two Spirit people like is happening. Um, that's incredible. Um, and yeah, I definitely agree. I think like starting, you know, starting with ceremony to, to start in a good way, but also to start in a good mind as well, right? Um, um, with, with what you had to say um, a lot. Yeah, and I think, you know, whether you're part of, you know, the LGBTQ community, saying that um, particular, you know, black and, and brown people have very much paved the way for the LGBTQ community. Um, in terms of civil rights and, and acceptance and things like that. But, um, you know, regardless of that, I think it's important to, whether you're in those communities or not, like black and brown people made a lot of sacrifices um, to get where we are today. Um, and, and definitely for the, you know, a lot of you know, white people have had advantages as a result of black and brown people suffering and, and trauma and colonization and systemic racism. So that's why we, you know, acknowledging is really the first step, but it's the beginning of a conversation and we need to have more of those dialogues. So thank you, Nina. Um, next, um, we'll have Chickadee speak. Again, the question um, here is just talking about how can, um, you know, people regardless of, or in specifically, um, you know, indigenous, non-indigenous, um, LGBTQ or allies, um, what can they do to uh, be in solidarity and show support to two sphere communities? The question's also in the chat as well. Yeah, um, Nyawe, um, for me, I think what the best thing that people can do is um, give us a voice, um, raise us up. Uh, you know, I've, I can say it, you know, literally as put us on your shoulders, you know, pick us up. 
um, help us step up to those higher places, help us get our voice out there. You know, like content creators, like um, include more stories, include more um, perspectives and different things like that. Um, yeah, give us a voice and help us help us be our own voices. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, cookie. Okay. Thank you, Chickadee, for speaking on that. Yeah, I think, you know, those things are important to uh, be able to reclaim um, our spaces and our roles and identities. And, you know, um, historically, like our roles and responsibilities, and, and still are, I think, to a degree, are to speak for those who don't have voices. That you know include the you know include the marginalized and the vulnerable and the disenfranchised, but also it includes the land and includes all the animals and and um, and everything that's a part of creation who isn't able to speak up and and defend themselves or uh, be able to have a voice in what they say. But unfortunately, because again, dang colonization, um, I could talk about it all day, but you know has kind of taken away your voice and. Um, you know, we do what we can to to bring that back, but sometimes we don't always have the platforms because we too are particularly marginalized in a lot of ways. And so I think I agree with you. That's important for people in that privilege um, to be able to spaces for people like to speak for people like us. Um, again, thank you, Chickadee. Um, Linda. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm having some internet issues. Um, can people hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. I was like, it was freezing a bit. So I was like, what's going on? Um, okay, I'm just gonna have you answer the question as well. You're the last person. Okay. Again, uh, um, was what do you think, um, you know, people can do both indigenous, non-indigenous, LGBTQ allies can do to be uh, can do to be in solidarity and show support to two spirit communities. And again, it's in the chat. Question. Well, I can tell you from experience. I've been in Canada about 22 years now, and this is home to me. Um, I got a lot of my teachings. I'm on Choctaw website, and I, I try to stay in touch with and to try and find history about two spirit peoples. I have the names for, for male intent and female intent, and it's like, um, but they're separated, you know? So I came up with, uh, I believe it was Chileptuklo. That's my own saying, and I kind of got questioned about that by some Choctaw elders or people. But everything changes, and it's every era, every generation changes and we have to we need to we don't have to but we need to in order to serve the people and spread come together in unity and spread the knowledge of what two spirit peoples are we need to we need to um we need to listen and and pass on the stories and the histories and me not knowing i'm still looking for someone to Give me some information on the Choctaw peoples, the two spirit peoples. Um, so too close shut up means two spirit. I came up with that. Uh, I'm like, I, I, it's male and female and, and we need to just put it together here. You know, like it felt separated. So I put it together and came up with shut up too close, which means spirit two. We kind of do things backwards, which is okay because I was born backwards. I do everything backwards, well, almost anyway. Um, and I have been here, and I know I've been a part of the centers, and I know they come up with questionnaires of what do you what do you need, what do you want to see, what do you want to learn, what do you what can we do for you? And it's always been open to anyone, not just Indigenous peoples, but it's always been free for everyone to come and learn about two spirit peoples or the ways of indigenous peoples or the land acknowledgements and why we do the way things that we do that has been done for centuries traditions culture um and i've been around where all of these all of these things have been asked and just the other day i was talking to a friend of mine and and um 
I'm like, you know what? For 20, almost 22 years that I've been here, I've learned a lot. And I've, I've took to heart what I've learned. But when we have given these free uh, teachings or workshops, we're telling, it, it's advertised. Everyone's welcome. It's free. And 99, 95% of the time, it is our communities that come together with very little those that wanted to know. And we're putting it on. We do really great advertising and, you know, like Facebook and all kinds of, of, of media to try and bring in people to learn. And the thing of it is they don't come. And then they go, I didn't know. Well, you've had plenty of time to learn. If you can use a computer, you can learn. If you have names and numbers and emails, you can get a hold of those people and learn. And, and I'm kind of like mm, a little upset that, that, that they keep going, well, we didn't know. Well, take the time. It is your responsibility to take the time and come out and learn. We, we're we giving it freely. Even the LGBTQ plus, it, our information, our, our events is always being pushed. Come and learn. Come and be a part of this. And, and it's up to the other people. It's up to those people to come and learn. We can't learn for them. You know, we're doing what we're supposed to do. And they need to take on the responsibility. If they want to really, truly understand us, they need to come out to these events. They need to come and get a hold of someone. They, you know, like we can't do all the work for you. You know, it, it's... Um, I think that more people need to come out and learn. I mean, they can't now because of COVID, but once, once this is done and they need to come out and, and learn, there's no more excuses, you know, like, like it's time. We should know about each other. You know, we should be supporting each other. And that's really non-Indigenous and Indigenous. There's Indigenous people that... Um, they're there they walk the path but they don't come out and support because you know because religion has separated us you know i tell people i'm not religious i don't i mean i, I grew up religious you know but i'm not religious but i'm very spiritual and there is a big divide between religion and and spirituality that's all folks <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So, uh, all right. I thought I was keeping track and I was not. So who would like to answer next? If um, Chickadee oh, is the Chickadee's next speaker. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're back. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I was here the whole time. I've just been turning it on and off periodically in case like there's been internet issues. Um, but I will let you know if I'm like having problems. <laughs> Sorry, Chickadee, um, the question when you're ready to answer it, um, it's just a, oh wait, you already, you spoke first, didn't you? That's what oh, I was I did say. it again. <laughs> That's okay. That's oh, what I was gosh, trying I'm to so say. Sorry. We are um, kind of, we are getting to, um, near the end of our actually our time tonight, but it's been a really wonderful uh, dialogue and I wish we definitely had more time to, to talk more. Um, maybe there can be a part two, you know, who knows? Um, uh, yeah, um, so uh, let's see. Um, we do want to have a bit of time for um, Q&A. Um, so uh, I think we're gonna kind of skip ahead. Um, unfortunately, going to skip ahead from some of the questions, but um, sorry, I'm just looking at this message from our team and trying to figure out what they're saying because um, I'm a little confused about uh, what is going on. Um, it's okay. 
Um, oh, yeah, I think one thing was that because we are getting close to time, then maybe we could oh, have one person okay. answer question one, let whoever volunteers, and then oh. another volunteer for question two, and then uh, have uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, um, as you were saying, the wrap up that, question, yeah, right, right, yeah, because as you were saying that, I like started rereading this, and I was like, oh, wait, that's what you okay, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. clarification is great. Okay, my so um, yeah, this will be kind of like whoever wants to go, like, can just like go ahead for, for the next couple of questions. We'll just have like one person do it each. Um, kind of first come, first serve. Um, so we actually have three questions left. So that's perfect. If anyone wants to do one of each, that's cool. But uh, it's also only up to how people <laughs> feel. Um, so the uh, next question we got is um, and remember, we only have one person. Could you speak to some of the challenges you faced or positive experiences you've had within your community and broader society? So if any of you want to speak, just, you know, go ahead and unmute yourself and speak. Hmm. I can go. Um, so for myself, um, as y'all can see, I am heavily melanated. You know, that plays a huge part in how people perceive me being too spirit or queer or anything like that. Um, I usually get asked to verify myself. And I have like list credentials. So I tend to get rude and just say, you know, my left pinky toe is native <laughs> because I just, I'm really tired of, of having to explain and go into blood quantum and all that stuff. Um, um, and then like a positive experience that um, I think the positive experience is that I get to be on panels like this and get to share my thoughts, feelings, opinions, experiences with other people. But I also get to learn so much more. Like I really love how Tukiti spoke about, um, speaks about um, uh, twin spirits. Um, that's something I'm learning a lot more about. I don't identify with it, but I think that's absolutely amazing. And um, uh also with Linda, I really love the fact that um, there is the gap in age. I, I adore that because um, I find myself to be on the cusp of like, I'm what they try to call me as a millennial, but I don't identify with it because I feel like I'm such an old spirit. But I, I really feel like, um, I, I really feel like I'm a medium between these two generations of being able to understand both sides. And I guess that kind of also plays into being two spirits and just being able to know how to bridge that gap or when to say, okay, over here, calm down or this side, calm down. It, um, I just, mostly the networking. I really love the networking about being two spirit because I get to be around a lot of indigenous queer people like across the nation, like meeting the most fabulous, kindest, loving people. Um, it's, it's, it's our own little clique. We have like our own little family, you know, once we know who's who, like there's like no doubt, you know, we're just all like stellar, amazing people. So I think that's the most positive thing, like out of all the crazy that our people go through, I think this is one of the most beautiful forms of being able to express ourselves and just live and be. So yeah, I just kind of want to share that part. Yeah. I love yeah. that, Mina. Thank you. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of positive things about like, you know, about being too spirit. And I feel like it's often a lot of focus on kind of like the bad things, right? But yeah, I love two spirit community. I love the community. Like I, I knew Chickadee be before the panel. And so that's why I was like so excited to, you know, they both have really um Ways, and I love the energy that they they both bring. I love the energy you bring too. It's fantastic. So um, it makes me feel good, and I definitely feel that that connection and, and that love. Um, so thank you for speaking to that. And um, as for the the negative experiences, yeah, like um, so I'm having issues with my camera, but I'm still speaking. Um, but absolutely, like you know, there's so much anti-blackness, unfortunately, still in indigenous communities. Um, a lot of that has to do with blood quantum too, right? Um, and, you know, for me as someone who's, you know, you know, mixed black person, but I'm 
you know, have always been read more as like indigenous than, than black, I've had, it's been a lot easier for me to navigate indigenous spaces and to be accepted. Um, and, you know, I know that my, you know, my more visibly uh, black Afro indigenous siblings, like don't always have that opportunity. And like, you know, just because, you know, we've been like, just because indigenous peoples have been oppressed. Oh, okay, camera's still not working. Um, you know, just because the indigenous peoples have been oppressed because of our, our own race doesn't mean that like, you know, it's okay for us to, to do the same with our, our, our black kin, you know, we're, we have a lot of parallels and, and struggles and, you know, you're like, yeah, exactly. Like you just have to learn, unfortunately, is you just have to learn to take up your own space, which sucks. And I wish like that, it, that didn't have to be the case for you, but I'm so glad that you have because your, your perspective and your voice and just your, your being, your spirit is, is so important to, um, to, you know, to our community. So I'm really happy that you're here and, you know, and you're taking up that space and you're reclaiming that space because you're, you're just as indigenous as the rest of us. You have that in your heart and your soul and your ancestors. I'm sure are so proud it. of you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So what Caleb was kind of saying, it's not a race to power, but a race to dismantle power. We're, we're all in this together. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see, is my camera working now? Okay, it's working now. Um, so just to move on, because I know we're getting short on time. Um, there's two more questions left. Um, we'll have one of the panelists, uh, my computer today. Um, we'll have one of the panelists take on each. Um, so the next one, um, thank you, Helen. I didn't mean to open up Photoshop. Why is that happening? <laughs> um, <laughs> love technology, right? Um, so the next question is, um, and I think Nina was already speaking, speaking to this to a degree. Um, but um, in what ways does racism play into the organization of two-spirit identities? Also, I closed Photoshop for those who are wondering. Hmm. I guess I can just add something in there um, while we're waiting for folks to speak. Um, something, so a lot of folks believe that we're extinct, like that we don't, that we're not even present, that we're not here. And if we are, we're living in Igloo somewhere. And as much as that may be true for some of our nations in the far north, it's really not that true. Um, they have respect on a nation of people when we don't even realize, folks don't even realize that we're here. Like if you look at the population in Canada, we're not even near 7% of the entire population. So how, so race has everything to do with us as a people, let alone being two-spirit or queer or male or female or missing, or, you know, like we barely have, okay, let me, let me not say that. I was gonna say we barely have any people left because that's just absolutely rude and it's dismissing everyone that is present in here. And I love all those people, the good ones and the bad ones, I love you all. Um, so I think that's something that we have to like really think about is, um, we are reestablishing ourselves, we are rebuilding ourselves, we are relearning, we're all coming home. And I think that's the only way we can really relate it about race right now is the fact that we are still all just trying to find ourselves home. And once we do that, then we will get up to the next steps of figuring out how do we conquer and not divide. I mean, it's a process. Yeah, definitely, definitely, you know. Um... I think uh, at this point, um, we're gonna go ahead to the Q&A just for the sake of time. Um, but yes, I think we have to like, you know, not only know our past, but also know who, who we are in order to do that, to really work and to support each other. Um, so let's go look at some questions. Um, let's see, we got a couple of questions here. Um, I have not done this before, to be totally honest. So um, I can read I'm not it sure how like. this works. I got you. So the question okay. is, yeah, this may not okay. be an appropriate question. And so please feel free to leave it. Uh, I have two 14 year old children who are transgender, uh, a son and a non-binary child. Both have experienced significant bullying. 
uh, and both are managing depression and anxiety relating to transphobia in this cis world. Uh, and, you know, essentially, yes, I acknowledge two spirit is not trans. Those are very different things. Uh, but I was hoping uh, if any of you might be willing to describe how you might have developed skills to help you navigate a specifically hostile environment. Yeah, thank you um, for your question. I think that's, you know, I'm so sorry to hear about, you know, the struggles that your children are experiencing um, because of, you know, the identities in which they hold in, in this world, the world can be cold sometimes. Um, I definitely think it's an important panelists um, in terms of if there's anybody who'd like to address that question. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would. Um, uh, yeah, um, for me, uh, yeah, I have, um, I, I do identify as having transitioned. Um, I began identifying, like I said in my bio, um, I began identifying as a trans man and now identify as someone who has transitioned from a woman to a gender fluid person. Um, that uh, often uses masculine terms. Um, so for me, uh, growing up, I grew up in a, a later time because I, uh, a closer time because it was uh, 2002 when I was born. So the, a lot of the work uh, was there, uh, was being done. Um, a lot of uh, people were a little bit more accepting um, they were uh, starting to understand things, but it was definitely not as um, connected as it is now with social media. Um, so um, I never really, I'm not sure if it uh, extends to cyberbullying, so I, I don't know if I could speak on that, but um, being teased for being queer or trans um, and then dealing with your own depression and anxiety on top of that was something very strongly uh, in my life. And for me, um, the biggest thing that it was, was reaching out. It was uh, talking to different teachers, talking to different people that I felt safe with. Um, and then they would, a lot of times they would do the talking for me. Um, they would talk to other people who would talk to other people and it would get put into the, it would get changed, things would get changed for me. Um, things would happen. And sometimes that's not just a teacher, that's sometimes a lot of times actually, that's a friend, um, just a peer um, who is in the same group as the people that are, you know, I guess your offense, if you want. Um, the people who are, you know, bullying or picking on you, um, they're in the same age group or interest group um, and definitely not in the same uh, emotional uh, emotional <laughs> manipulation group, um, but someone who can connect with those people for you, because those people definitely are misunderstanding something, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, uh, that, that was my big thing, was getting uh, a support group underneath me. And I did that just by talking to more people and um, today I feel like that's a lot easier with social media. There's groups online that will help people uh, that do outreach for people. There's things like that. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, I think that there's a lot that's being done now that we can do online too. Um, so thanks for letting me speak. Um, thank you, Tickety, for answering that question. I think that just goes to show the importance of, you know, having uh, support, um, as the kind of what Nina was speaking to earlier. Um, just in the, I'm just going to read real quick. Um, Nina mentioned that uh, in the Toronto area, um, but they are open to people who aren't from Toronto because I've attended some of their stuff. Um, there's an organization called Two Spirited Peoples of the First Nation. They have uh, lots of programs, programs as well as. Um, Oh, ODE remembered. Yes, Ode. Of course. Oh, ODE. Thank you. <laughs> um, you can add them um, on Facebook for an intake. Um, and yes, thank you for including that. Um, I was actually just about to uh, type in um, 
just before we ask your last question, that I also run um, in all ages, uh, Indigenous um, Two-Spirit and LGBTQ sharing circle um, online through my work at Day Duana Disney's Aboriginal Health Center. Um, unfortunately, that's only open to people um, living in and around uh, Hamilton, Brantford, and the Niagara regions, um, just because of the work I do. Um, yes, they're both specific. Um, okay, both specific for uh, for Two-Spirit, LGBTQ, youth and uh, OD um, is youth focused. Um, but I was saying my programming is, um, sorry, uh, is, for, is for all ages. Um, so yeah, um, I think in on the Eventbrite, my work Instagram is on there. I can also put it in the chat um, where you can find out more information about my the services that I provide as well as part of my work at Dejuana Destinies. Um, I'm having issues with my camera again. Technology has not been good for me today. Um, but we're drawing to a close. There's uh, two comments. Um, and somebody said that uh, Oki rocks. Um, and <laughs> kind of like a hugs, giving you hugs. Um, and um, also saying that I agree with Oki. It isn't reconciliation if the indigenous peoples are all doing the heavy lifting. And I definitely agree with that too. Um, there's one question left. And it's just um, one of the panelists, feel free to take it if you'd like. Um, it says, correct me if I'm wrong, but the term two-spirit directly relates uh, to the fact that those who are two-spirit have multiple roles uh, in their community. Yeah, I think that's a great way to kind of sum it up, us multitasking people. <laughs> multi-love, multi-heart, multi, multi. <laughs> I love that. I feel like I'm multi everything. Like I'm always been like I'm kind of all trades at my job. I kind of I kind of do it all. I try to do what I can. I um I hope I'm not talking over everybody. Um, but I I think that Go if ahead. we all <laughs> get together and 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 stay in touch, I think we're gonna see this just just flourish. You know, it's it's going to grow, and and people are going to start listening, and coming, and 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 that's what that's why we're here, right? Is to have those out there come and understand us as as spiritual gifted peoples, you know. And um, I'm honored that I've been asked to be here. I, there's so much. I know when I get off of here that I'm going to go, oh, I should have said this. Oh, I should have said that. But this is this is where we have to bring everyone in and become unified. But they need, you know, we've listened to their ways for so long. Now it's our turn. We need to bring our ways back and say, look, this is not working for us. We need to find another platform to bring us together to work for those next generations to help heal Mother Earth, to honor universe and creator and the stars and the moon. Um, and, and just, we need, we our blood needs to flow together. Our spirits need to come together. When we come together as indig indigenous peoples that I've been around, one of the things we do right off the bat is smudge in our drum group, especially. We're smudging. You know, and we're coming together in one circle. And there are those that might set out the circle, but they don't realize they're part of that circle anyway. You want to sit outside of it? Okay. But you're going to feel that love and you're going to feel that acceptance and you're going to feel that. And then you're going to want to join. And usually they do. And so I have my, my little fur baby in there. She's got this little turquoise, uh, which I love turquoise, a shirt on that a friend Wanda got her. And it says... Um, what's that say? Love is my superpower. Love is my superpower. <laughs> I love that so much. I definitely kind of feel the same way as well. Like I want to, I want to share that love with everybody. And so like, I wish I could give all, all of you here hugs. Maybe someday I get to see you in person, but let's, virtual hugs. Let's stay there. in touch. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yes, please. Um, I think those are really beautiful words to end off with, Oki. So I really appreciated you sharing that and answering that person's question. Um, before we were at time, but before we finished, there were some door prizes for people who attended. Um, and I'm just going to um, 
read off who the prize winners are. Um, so the, uh, that's exciting, right? Uh, love door. I miss door prizes, so I think it's awesome that you're off. Um, <laughs> um, so, so the, um, there's to skip the dishes. Um, and the winner of that is uh, Sherry Vansicle. Ow! Oh no, am I? Never apologize for our occupying space. Um, okay. So yeah, Never. so I was just <laughs> saying, um, thank you. <laughs> Sorry if I was talking over you, I was having some uh, technical issues. Um, yeah, so the, like I was saying, the $30 gift card to skip the dishes is Sherry Vansicle. Ow! Oh. <laughs> that was what I was talking about. You didn't do anything. <laughs> you, you're like, uh, I just feel excitement. <laughs> I love it. I love the energy. Honestly, I was having a rough day, like really rough day today. And this is honestly just being like, I can still feel the energy even through all these screens of like all these really <laughs> wonderful people. And it's really like made my night. So I very much needed this. Mm. Yeah. So I appreciate, it's okay, okay, I appreciate your excitement and your enthusiasm, we need that. Um, so the next winner, um, which is the Cooking with Trans People of Color Cookbook by the 519 Trans People of Color Project from Glad Day Bookshop, which is, uh, there's one copy of that, that's Bon Klassen. Um, Kaylin, if you could possibly write these into the chat as well, that would be great. Um, and then the last prize we have, which is two winners, is um, a $50 gift card to Cheekbone Beauty. Um, and so that's uh, Jillian um, Rabi, and I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your names wrong, uh, and Marie, uh, Mariana Garrido de Castro. Oh! Um, so that's all for winners. Thank you so much for, for coming out tonight. Oh, yes, please, please, Nino. I would love, I would love that. I think that would be a oh! great way to end our session tonight. Right. Um, so Nino was <laughs> suggesting to do uh, sing a song to uh send us out a two spirit on our song two rounds i'm like oh i wish i had my drum with me but that's okay you go ahead Ida. <laughs> thank you so much so this is a two spirit on a song that came to me last year when i spent some time up in doki's reservation and this song is just absolutely amazing you want to dance get up and dance feel the energy feel the vibe two spirit pride here we go Hey, 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 oh, oh, hey, I hope y'all felt that. Um, I just want to close off with saying, I see you, I feel you, I hear you. And to that young one or the young ones or anyone that's struggling, um, trying to discover and learn themselves, I love you, I see you, I feel you, it does get better, keep holding on. Um, there are so many people around here that love you and can speak for you if you don't feel like you can. Um, reach out. And if one person doesn't um, appeal to you, go to somebody else. Just keep, keep trying. You're so important and you're loved. And I care about you. So that's it. Oh, those are such beautiful, you know, the song was so beautiful. And I really appreciate you sharing that because I didn't even know there was a two spirit on our song. And I really resonate, you know, and, and speak to those beautiful words that you just shared as well. I definitely feel the same way because I was, I was once one of those you know, I'm 23, so I'm kind of in the same, kind of the same age range you are, you know, um, and I know that for a long time, I, I was struggling really hard too, but, you know, 
even if it takes a while and it did for me you'll you'll find that the chosen family and those people who, who love you for who you are and and celebrate you and will will be there for you and i'm i care about all of you too Thank you, Miigwech, for for all the you know all the thank you to all the panelists for for coming and speaking tonight. Um, to Miigwech, thank you to to Kaylin for the uh, incredible land acknowledgement and for for kind of helping me out with some of the internet issues tonight. I appreciate you kind of being my co-host. Um, and I also want to thank our lovely tech support and coordinator for tonight, uh, Michelle Mudge, um, from you, the Brock Student Justice Center. <laughs> it wouldn't. This wouldn't have been possible without her. So I'm um, incredibly grateful and for Brock Pride as well for running this really incredible panel and event. Um, and so uh, for folks who want the prize, please uh, email mmudge at brocky.ca to claim your prize. Um, and before we close off, um, Sherry has offered uh, to give their uh, door prize to Oki for being so inspirational and sharing her story. It's oh so my God, don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, great. thank you, Sherry. Oh. Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, for again, team Gwetch, team Gwetch, team Gwetch, that's all I can say. But um, really appreciate, you know, all the uh, you know, wonderful panelists and everyone who's been a part of this and, and for all the attendees who, you know, have um, came to ask really meaningful questions as well. Um, Hopefully we can, yeah, I don't know if, uh, I think that's pretty much it. So, uh, um, in the knowledge keepers told me that roughly like mayor pass cross again. There's no word to say goodbye in Anishinaabe Mo. Until I see you, I'm a pee. Belief. I'm a pee. Matter what, I'm a pee. Yeah. I'm a pee. Mm. See you again. Thank you all, everyone. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Be well. Good night. Good night. No.